13 years ago, Seth was two, <coughs> or was it three? Three. <coughs> Susie would have been five. And uh, we'll discuss that on Sunday. You're always at war. And uh, bad things seem to always happen when you least expect it. That's just the way it is. Amen. And uh, them planes crashed into them tires, crashed into the Pentagon, and that last plane took off late, and they said, well, we ain't, we must, we're going to die. We might as well just take them down with us. Nobody else gets hurt, and they did. Hallelujah. And tomorrow they declared it in December, Patriots Day. And uh, then uh, at the time, our president decided to go to war. Amen. And uh, uh, I think they're deciding tonight. They don't want no ground troops down there. We don't want to go through that business again. Amen. That's what I say. Just nuke them all. Amen. Now, oh, foolish Galatians. Galatians chapter number three, chapter three, three, verse number one. Oh, foolish Galatians, who hath bewitched you that you should not obey the truth before whose eyes Jesus Christ has been evidently set forth, crucified among you. Father, we love you. I pray you, God, you'd help us in Jesus' precious name. Amen, amen, amen. You can have a seat. Three things are always going to fight you. That's the world, that's the flesh, that's the devil. Amen. And uh, you're going to have that till the last bitter end. And uh, Paul has been talking to the Galatian church. He gives his testimony in chapter 1 how he got saved, went to the Arabia, Stayed there three years, was taught by the Holy Ghost of God, came back, spoke with Peter, spoke with the Lord's brother James, that's chapter number 1, verse 19. He then uh, came to, uh, amen, uh, verse uh, chapter 2, we see 14 years have gone back, they go to Jerusalem. And uh, Paul has to get into Peter's face. And uh, he said, you being a two-timer. He said, two-faced. Right. Amen. Two-faced. Mm -hmm. He said, you act one way here and another way over there. Right. Yeah. Amen. And uh, there's a lot of folks that still do that. They're two-faced. They act one way in church, and then they act another way at school, then they act another way at, at home, and they act another way at work, and amen. They just, they just, they, they can't figure out who they are, I guess, amen. I'm not really sure, but they just don't know who they are. So he starts off by saying, listen, you can't be treating my church this way. One minute you're eating pork rib chop, pork ribs, amen, with barbecue sauce, amen, vinegar style. That's Memphis style, amen. Uh, I don't like. I, I like the Texas style, I like that sweet barbecue, amen. I don't like that vinegar style, but it was still good, amen. And um, so I haven't tried the Kansas one yet, though. But uh, I'm still more partial to Texas. Uh, but. He got into Peter's face and said, listen, you was eating pork chops yesterday and bacon, and you was eating ribs at night, and then all of a sudden the Jews showed up, and now, you know, you say we got to eat kosher. And he said, you can't be doing that to my people. He said, you can't be acting this way. And apparently Paul gets stronger toward the church because he's talking to the church, the Galatian church, through this letter, and the first thing he says, Oh, fools. Oh, foolish Galatians. Wouldn't you hate to be called a fool? Amen. 
for the preacher to stand up and say, you sure have been acting like a fool. You know what a fool is? That's an 85-year-old man chasing a 26-year-old woman. Amen. That's a plain fool. Thank you. God bless you. Hallelujah. Amen. That's a fool. Amen. Amen. Or some little girl chasing some old man, you know, just so they can get their money. Thank you. You didn't like that one either. I can see that. All right. He called them fools. He said, why? He said, because apparently in chapter 2, some of them have believed the lie. You got to do this and you got to do that. You're under the law and you got to dress a certain way. You got to talk a certain way. You got to eat a certain way. You got to do the, all the rules and regulations and you've got to follow them all according to whose standard? My standard. Amen. I, I, because I'm the one that's setting all the rules and regulations. Really? So the preacher turns off in chapter number 3, that's a man, the Apostle Paul, and says, Hey, you bunch of fools. Who's bewitched you? Are you under a spell? Have they come in here and put you on, you know, witches put people on spells, you know that? You ever watch them, you know, I can see y'all don't watch a movie. But, uh, you know, they'll put you on them spells and love. Uh, they got love spells. The next thing you know, you're madly in love with somebody because they put a love potion, you know, love potion number nine. Amen. Uh, you knew I was going to throw that in there. Amen. If you're old enough. Uh, but uh, I, I, I'm just saying, Paul saying, uh, has a witch come in here and made y'all a bunch of fools? Is that what happened? Did a witch come in here? And now y'all have turned the gospel all upside down. And now, instead of by grace, now it's by works. Amen. Now instead of Jesus dying on the cross in the blood, now it's by you keeping the law. Is that what you are, fool? Are you bewitched? We have our own. Well, I just don't understand why they ain't dressing like we do or talk like we do or act like we do. Well, you know, you, maybe it's because you've been in this thing for 30 years and they've been in it for two months or a year. But you didn't like that one either. Amen. I can already see that. Amen. You want them to eat just like you eat. You ate steak. Amen. And they're barely on bare baby formula. You gotta take the little cup out. You know, that's how they do it nowadays. And women don't nurse babies anymore. And then they, you know, they gotta put the little thing in the little bottle and they gotta shake the bottle. Here you go, kid. You know, suck on that for a while, you know. I can see y'all really enjoying this message. Amen. Now, no, you don't expect a child to know the same thing as an adult. Amen. But these Jews have. Paul says, you've been bewitched. You're acting like a fool. They put a spell on you. So now you go around thinking like a fool, acting like a fool, talking like a fool. Amen. Wanting everybody to think all about you just like you do. Amen. Why? Because you learned it all in chapter 2. When the legalist showed up and said, keep the law, keep the law. He said, don't you remember Jesus Christ was crucified among you? Don't you remember when the Lord was crucified? This would only what I learn of you, receive you the spirit by the work of the, or by the works of the law. Or by the hearing of faith. Which one was it? How did you get saved? He's asking the Galatian church. Was it by you keeping the law? I was born Catholic. You know what Catholics did? They went to go confess their sins and they did good works and they got drunk. Amen. That's what a good Catholic does. Hallelujah. You party, party, party. Amen. Then you go confess your sins. Say ten Hail Marys and, you know, five active contritions and a couple of Our Fathers and you're, you can go get drunk again. Everything's fine, amen. Everything's just fine. Everything's lovely. 
He said, which one was it, the law or faith? Now he got to him thinking about it. Are you so foolish? He's, he's calling him a fool again. The preacher is calling the Galatian church fools. Having begun in the spirit, are you now being made perfect by the flesh? In other words, because you're so religious now and think you're above everybody because you have standards and convictions and you keep the law, everybody else is below you, you little Christians, you. I am a big Christian and you are a little Christian. I can see that already now. Amen. Now, 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 amen. Uh, he said, how'd you get it? He said, you got it by faith, just like everybody else, amen. It wasn't anything you earned. It wasn't because of some special ability that God gave you. No, you got born again. You was just as lost as everybody else and need to get saved. Now, if you ain't saved now this, this afternoon, you need to get saved. Amen. Amen. That's right. Are you so foolish? Having begun in the spirit, you're made perfect by the flesh. Are you made perfect by the flesh now that you're just keeping the law? And you're doing so much better just because you don't drink or smoke or you got short hair and, and, and you put on a put on a tie, amen, put on a tie, amen. So is is, is that why? Because you got a dress on now and amen and, and and so you look the part and so because you look the part now now you're you're better than everybody else. Is that what you try to tell me? He said, You're acting like a fool. You know, the person, if they wanted to come down this afternoon and get down on their knees and call out to God and God save them, they're just as much, amen, saved as you are. They're going to heaven just as much as you are. Amen. amen. Have you suffered so many things in vain, if it be yet in vain? There's a suffering process. We all suffer. Let me, let me explain this to you now. I don't care if you're saved or lost. This world, you're going to suffer. Did, did, did that make any sense? Amen? You, you're going to have problems with your health. You're going to have problems at, with your family. You're going to have problems with your finance. You're just going to have problems, man. Amen? I mean, they're just going to be problems. That's just life. And the only thing we've got is we got salvation. That's pretty good. We get to go to heaven. We got Christ. That's pretty good. We got the Holy Ghost living inside of us. That's real good. Amen. You got peace. You got joy. You got mercy. You got all these things inside of you. And Paul says, is it in vain? Did God give you all this stuff just so that you can turn around and badger the lesser, weaker Christians? Is that what it is? So that you can talk about, you know, how bad they are? Have you suffered in vain? I mean, the, the church was under persecution. He said, is, was it in vain that, that you were going through all these trials? Or do you consider yourself more superior? He therefore that ministereth to you the Spirit and worketh miracles among you, doth he by the works of the law or by the hearing of faith? It's faith. It has nothing to do with the law. It's faith. Amen. Amen. People got out there, they, they thought Peter was still so full of the Holy Ghost that they would line up the streets with bodies, people that were sick just so that the shadow would be cast over as he walked by the street, hoping that Peter's shadow would just hit them so that they could be healed. That takes a lot of faith right there, amen, to believe if I can get just the preacher's shadow on me, I can get healed. Amen. And it works. That's faith. That's believing. So he goes back to Abraham, verse number 6. Even as Abraham believed God, it was accounted unto him for what? 
righteousness. Why? He just believed God. Now ye therefore that ye which are of the faith, the same are the children of Abraham. Well, he's talking to the Galatian church. You've got to remember the Galatian church is the Gentile church. They are not Jews. They are Gentiles. Okay? Does that make sense? That's us. I don't see no Jews here. Amen. So that would be us. We are the Gentile church. But yet, Paul says, even though Abraham was a Jew, he's still our father. Amen. Why? Well, he's going to explain it to you. And the scripture foresee that God would justify the heathen. Who are we? Heathen. God, don't you love preachers the way they describe us? Amen. He said, you were a heathen, amen, and you're acting like a fool right now. Look like you under, amen, you look, look like you got under the spell of some witch. I love Paul, amen. Heck, that's good preaching right there, amen. amen. He said, no, you bunch of heathens. He said, you got saved through faith. Preach before the gospel unto Abraham, saying, And these shall, I, shall all nations be blessed. In other words, you go back to your Bible and read that in the Old Testament. So then they which we be of faith are blessed with faithful Abraham. You're just as good as the Jews. Why do you want to act like a Jew if you're just as good as a Jew? Amen. Amen. For as many are under the law are under the curse, for as written, cursed is everyone that continueth not in all things that are written in the book of the law to do them. But that no man is justified by the law in the sight of God, it is evident, for the just shall live, how? By faith. That means you can get up this morning and sin have some wicked thought, get right, come to church, and you're still going to heaven. Amen. Past sins forgiven, present sins forgiven, future sins forgiven. I think some Baptists have a hard time with that one. Amen. Amen. What do you mean he's going to heaven? I don't, I'm just doing, I don't even think he's saved. We know that already. Amen. We can tell. Because you want him to keep the law. I think you're part Jew. What do you think about that? Amen? Maybe you need to start eating kosher. Maybe you need to stop eating bacon. Amen? Hello? Amen? I mean, if you're going to be one of them law keepers, amen, you might as well stop eating bacon. Amen? That's part of the law. Oh, no. On Saturday, I like my bacon. Amen? Amen? I get breakfast once a week. Hallelujah. I'm going to eat bacon. Amen? Amen? might be once a week because I'm on this diet I don't because I don't want to die Amen. and I'm not justified by works or by the law I'm justified by faith I believe Jesus Christ died for me I believe his blood amen shed away uh, amen cover this world of all sins past present future whosoever not only that, he died for everybody who went to hell. Right. Yeah, just because they went to hell doesn't mean that he didn't die for them. He died right. for every sin in the world. Right. Every sin, every sin, every sin, every sin. Your sin, my sin, everybody's sin. Amen? Amen. You're saying, no, every sin? Uh, yes, Amen. that's your problem. You have no faith. Amen. He died for everybody. You say, well, I have a hard time doing right. Me too. Amen. That's why you've got to pray for character. Most people don't have any character. Amen. They were never taught, get up in the morning, go to work. They were never taught, amen, take care of your children. Pay the bills. You say, is that a learning experience? Did you come out paying your bill? No, I was a heathen. I moved from apartment to apartment to apartment to apartment to apartment to apartment to apartment. Because mm. right. we never could pay the bills. Right. So we just moved. They're like everybody else. You know why? I had no character. None. Right. 
I had to pray and ask God, give me some character, Lord. Uh, help me, amen, to be a Christian. Amen. If not, you're going to stay a heathen. Saved heathen. But you're going to keep acting like a heathen. Amen. You need some character in you. God's the only one that can put that in you. And it takes faith. It takes faith. It takes wisdom. Learn how to take care of money. It takes wisdom. Learn how to take care of family. It takes wisdom. Learn how to take care of your health. Amen. I, I mean, it just takes wisdom. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. It takes wisdom. Amen. you got to be taught. There's some things you've got to be taught. That's why you come to church. So you can listen to some preaching. We're not under the law. We're under faith. The just shall live by faith. And the law is not of faith. But the man that doeth them shall live in them. Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law, being made a curse for us, for it is written, Curse is everyone that hangeth on a tree. Christ died for everybody's sin, that the blessings of Abraham might come on the Gentiles through Jesus Christ, that we might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. Spirit through faith. Amen. Amen. Brethren. Oh, thank God he didn't call us fools anymore. Amen. He's now calling us brethren. I like that part too. Amen. Uh, brethren. He's, he's hopefully talking enough sense into you. Amen. That you're listening. And he said, brethren. Who is a brethren? That's somebody that's saved. Amen. That's going to church. Born again. Going to go to heaven when they die. He said, brethren, I speak after the manner of men, though it be but a man's covenant. Yet it is confirmed no man dis, 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 that's what I said, or addeth thereto. Amen. Now to Abraham and, and his seed where the promise is made, he said not, and two seeds, as of many, but as of one, and to thy seed, which is Christ. You are not a second class Citizen. Amen. Well, did you get you know to the Jew first and then to the Gentile? That's right. The gospel's supposed to go to the Jew first and the Gentile. Yeah, but we're still not second class citizens. No. Amen. Jew got to get saved too. Amen. He won't go to heaven. He got to get saved too. Amen. Amen. And, and and that's what they did. And and so Paul's telling the Galatian church, you're not a second class citizen. Stop acting like one. You're saved, born again. And this I say, that the covenant that was confirmed before of God in Christ, the law which, which was 430 years after cannot dissimulate that it should make the promise of non-effect. Nothing can take away your salvation once you're saved. And again, once saved, always saved. Heavy on the once. If you cannot go back in time, I didn't say the date, I didn't say remember the message, I didn't say remember the year, but if there ought to be a time in your life somewhere in the past where you can go back to and say, that's the day I got on my knees, that's the day I asked Jesus to come in my heart, amen, and say, Lord, I'm sick of my life, would you please, amen. It didn't have to be these exact words, but somewhere you humbled yourself to God and you said, God, would you move inside here? Would you please take care of me? Now, if you can't remember that, you're not safe. It's real simple. Many times, I remember praying. Many times, I remember reading my Bible. Many times, I remember going to church. Many times, I remember getting mad going to church. But I remember when I got saved. The question is, do you remember when you got saved? For if the inheritance be the law, it is no more promise of God that gave it to Abraham by promise. Wherefore then serveth the law, it was added because of the transgressions till the seed should come to whom the promise was made. 
and it was ordained by angels in the hand of a mediator. Who's the mediator? Well, that's Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. And it was ordained by, uh, amen, by the angels in the hand of the mediator. I like all that stuff. Amen. Amen. Oh, that's pretty good stuff right there. Amen. 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 Now, a mediator is not a, a mediator of one, but God is one. Is the law then again the promise of God? God forbid. For if there had been the law given, which could have been given life, verily righteousness should have been by the law. In other words, instead of calling this church Bible Baptist Church, we would be called Bible Tabernacle Baptist. I think it's Tabernacle or uh, Synagogue. You know, Baptist Synagogue. We would be under the law. We would be trying to keep the law. But we're not under the law. Thank God. Amen. Is the law good? Well, I'm glad you asked. But the scripture hath concluded all under sin that the promise by faith of Jesus Christ might be given to them that believe. In other words, you deserve hell. You cannot get saved until you actually believe I at one time deserved hell. And now I still do, but I'm saved. If you cannot but say that, amen. Well, no, I don't, I don't think I've, I've been that bad that I deserve hell. Then you, you're not saved. You never were saved. You have to believe I was that bad. Amen. I was bad enough to go to hell, amen. amen. And, and because I was bad enough to go to hell, amen, I deserved hell. But thank God for grace. Thank God for faith. Thank God that I got born again. Scripture concluded all into the sin. That the promise of faith of Jesus Christ might be given to them that believe. But before faith came we under the law. Shut up into the faith which should afterward be revealed. Why did the law come? Wherefore the law was our schoolmaster. Why do we go back to the Old Testament? Don't worry about the baby. I've seen many babies. Leave the baby alone. Amen. She all right. Amen. Amen. She come up here and preach a little bit. Amen. Uh, schoolmaster. You know what a schoolmaster is? That's somebody that teaches you something. Right? What's the law for? To teach you. Did you, did you learn how to read and write? Yes. To how to, how to, how to suffer? I can see some of y'all don't know what I'm talking about. Amen. You know, ciphering, you know, adding, subtracting, multiplying, division, dividing, all that other stuff. Amen. Amen. How many boxes does it take and how much is the freight and still make be able to make $500 profit? How many boxes do you got to sell? More than that. Pretty expensive box. Amen. But uh, no, schoolmasters to teach you something. That's what the law does. That's why we read the Old Testament. Amen. Now, it's going to give you an example in a minute that will totally blow your mind. It's fixing to give you an example that you are going to go, I don't believe that. Oh, so you don't believe the Bible. You say, oh, I just, what is he talking about? We're going to get to it in a minute. Amen. So it's a school. It's a school uh, master to bring us unto Christ that we might be justified by faith. But after that faith has come, we are no longer under a schoolmaster, for we are all the children of God by faith in Christ Jesus. For many of you have been baptized in Christ, have put on Christ. Notice, if you got saved, born again. You are now part of Christ. Amen. Where is Christ? Heaven. Where is Christ? Here in my heart. Where do I sit? In heavenly places. I'm bipolar. Amen. I'm here, but I'm also sitting up there. Amen. You say, explain that one. I can't. Amen. All I know is that's the way it is. Hallelujah. It gets even better. Are you ready? Are you ready to be shocked? 
Here it comes. There is neither Jew nor Greek. There is neither bond nor free. That means slave or owner of a slave or being a free person. There is neither male nor female. What? What did he say? What did he just say? You're the man's in charge of the family. Well, that's, that's Old Testament, and it's yes. still true. Amen. Somebody has to lead the family. Amen. God chose a man. Yes. He, you know, you know and, and again, the, our, my best description has always been food. I want pizza. No, I want Italian. I, I, want, uh, I want Chinese. All right? I want pizza. No, I want, I want, I want Chinese. Well, somebody's got to make a decision. We're hungry. We've got to eat. Amen. So, we're going to eat Chinese. 